Fish baby prospector trip. I got a request from a young man that has uh, one of these air guns. You can see I got a bunch of marker on there. It's just I was playing around with it a little bit, thinking about lightening it, but just ignore that. <laughs> Anyway, he was asking about the trigger and how I did it and how it got to be uh, one pound and crispy and wonderful. So uh, I told him I'd do a little video about that so you can see how to exactly do it, baby. So first things first, five millimeter. I take out these two screws. Okay, that was easy. This is the forward trigger assembly here. We're not worried about this side. We're worried about this side mostly. And so what we got to do is we got to pull off these four screws here. This will want to release this too. So because I have it all bolted together still, and I'm not going to remove anything else. This should still stay right in place there. So you don't need to refund that or do anything special. Yeah, there's one thing to note on these guys too is that I got them uh, fairly tight, but still, even though I got them fairly tight, see how easy it come on loose? That's what I just did. See that? It's it's tight, but it's not like crazy tight, right? You don't want to beef on it too much because uh, it just needs to be snug. It's an air gun, baby. <laughs> so anyway, you pull out these four. And these guys back here, you have to pull them out a little at a time to uh, the stock screws in too. So if you just try to unscrew them all the way, you can hit that little ledge and then you can't uh, get the other one out. So a little at a time, about two or three turns each until, uh, until they're out. Yeah, so if you had the screwed in all the way, obviously this can't come up, right? So. If you start unscrewing one of them, it's going to hit that edge of this guy like that. And then you could just be reefing on it to death, which you don't want to do that. Yeah, sometimes I've seen this pin here. Once I get this unscrewed, it gets a little bit squirrely sometimes. And it's snug right now. But uh, I had it apart the other day. Uh, maybe it was my 357. But anyway, that pin, you guys make sure that dude don't fall out somehow. You guys, of course, are all the way unscrewed. Now when you pull these guys up, this spring is going to want to shoot out of here a little bit. So you got to put your hand in front of it. Oh, there we go. Okay. So I pull them out, right? There's the spring, the end plate, and the rod. Now I'm going to pull those dudes out just because I don't want them to fall on the floor. Just like that. It's got to go back in like that, too. Now, this guy here is totally loose, though, right? So what you want to do is mine, if I go to tighten it, right? It only turns this far before this rod, you know, a threaded rod gets tight in this uh, block assembly. So on mine, that's how it is, but it's roughly 10 turns, I think. Oh, 11, 11 turns, <laughs> 11, ah. So uh, I just unscrewed it from this block here, right? It's a little trigger block. When you pull your trigger, obviously this whole thing moves forward a little bit. And then of course it'll pull on this guy, which will release your trigger. Boom, it'll shoot. Now inside here though, this is where the goodies are at. So let me put this dude down here and we'll pop those pins out and show you what we got. And this guy here, the deal is, is when you cock your gun here, this mechanism here, And then it'll latch onto that metal piece of the hammer there with this portion down here, like this. So as you slide it back, it'll get caught right in there. It's, it's spring-loaded, so it's been pushing kind of forward, right? But anyway, it pushes up on that, right? Like that. And so once it's cocked and you got all that spring pressure on here, then this guy here is what will release it. So if I put just a if I can do it here and show you, if I put just a little bit of pressure on it with my finger here and then push this guy, my baby finger, see how it releases it? Like that, right? And it'll shoot. Boom. 
So I'm barely putting any pressure with my baby finger, right? You can see how easy and how quick it snaps. Now, originally it was much, much tougher than that. And it felt gritty and, you know, creepy and slidey and grimy and <laughs> yeah, terrible. Anyway, on this guy here also, it's got like little neural, uh, you know, these pins are, are uh, neural on one side, on this side actually. And so you got to push them out the right way. I'm going to push mine out this way. Make sure you look at your gun though, top. When I push it out here, I'll, I'll show you. What I do that with, I just got a little punch, right? A little hammer here, and I just tap them out here. I'll show you how we do that. Okay, folks, I can show you a little better like this. So what I do with these guys is I typically will just put the punch on it, right? And you don't need a, a real hard surface, but it's probably better on a hard surface. I just give it a little tap. It's not out yet. I'll give it a bit more here. Like that. Popped right out. Now this guy you can see it's got like a neural on the uh, right hand side there. And so you make sure you stick that dude right back in there the way it came out. Just like that. So you put the smooth side in first and then of course those neurals will bite in there a little bit and keep that pin in there once you tap it in. So let me pull this out and I'll show you here. It's got a spring in there so be a little bit careful. That's right there, right? And down in here is the actual sear. You step down there, not this one, but that one in the middle there. Not the shiny spot here, but this shiny spot. That's the step. That's the sear step that this piece here, like this, when it gets pulled forward, it's sitting on that step. I can show it sitting on that step and then as you pull this forward it slips off that step and then this thing will of course release boom like that and shoot the gun and so that step is the one that's got to be reduced now this guy here uh the spring you can just set to the side for a second now this surface here looks pretty scrappy now I shot it about 500 times since then or more. A thousand maybe. Anyway, you got to polish that, dude. Basically, this surface right here, this ledge, it sits right on here, right? As you pull the trigger forward so this goes down, it'll slip off here. And then, of course, that piece will come up and release the bolt. And so this guy here, you need to polish that up. See how it's polished there compared to the dull spot over here? Right? You need to polish it up so it's nice and like a mirror finish. You can hit some of these other spots too a little bit too that rub somewhere. But I didn't really do too much to that. I, I mainly just polished this piece here. And then what really did the ticket is this piece down in here. Which let me pop this guy out here and we'll take a look at that too. I've had this out a couple times so mine comes out a smidge easier. All right? See the neural spots on the left side, right? Just like the other one. I'll pull this guy out here. This guy will just fall right out of there. Now this is important. This part right here. See that step right there? Right. Let me get a pointer here of some kind. Right here. This step that this wrench is sitting on. Mine was bigger than that. See how I wailed on it there a little bit? Yeah, it was significantly bigger. And uh, so I polished, uh, obviously, this surface right here, going down, downward, right? I polished that action right in there. Then the top of this thing really well. The sear actually itself. Yeah, a good picture, maybe. So this surface pointing down, going downward, right? This surface got to be polished. And, of course, I polished this guy here, which is not as important. However, when you recock the gun, that thing will slip up like that. So you might want to... Get everything super smooth, which mine's super smooth now. And of course, it'll be cocked, and then you pull the trigger, and it's cool. Slide off there, boom, it'll shoot. So that's the surface that I reduced this little step right there until I got one pound. And it was uh, about a half a millimeter, probably sticking out further there. 
So I wailed on it pretty good until it uh, was just about one pound. So I'll show you here what I did. So one of the other things I did, well anyway, what I did is I took a piece of like 1,000 and I folded it up several times, 1,000 sandpaper, right? Until I had a fairly heavy duty piece there. And then of course I wailed on this guy right on this surface here and above the sear. And that's her, and of course, then right on the sear too, pushing down a little bit on the sear and polish that. So I did that uh, several times, you know, cleaned it up for a good while. I also kind of buffed up the sides just a little bit to get off any super rough. You see all the rough machining in it, right? That's kind of what the sear looks like originally. You'll see when you do yours. <laughs> it looks just like that, right on that little sear step, right here. So I had several lines in mind that I polished straight off until they were gone. And then of course, uh, it was much smoother after that, but it was still pretty, it was like four or five pounds still. So I said, okay, enough of that. And then I started reducing it by sanding it this way. And of course you can lay it on a block, you know, something really flat with a piece of sandpaper and do it really perfect, which that's what I did is I actually laid it down and, you know, and then then really got it good. And, uh, you know, not just did it like this, you know, but, uh, this was really good for cleaning up the spots just a little bit more before I put it back together. Once I got everything kind of straight and good. And, uh, you can see those are fairly polished now. They're not like a mirror now, but, uh, I had to get my Dremel out and then I can polish them. Okay, now we'll stick it back together and see what we got. So yeah, I polished the side just a little bit just to get off some of the real rough stuff. So it operated real smooth, reduced the sear down maybe a half a millimeter or maybe a quarter of a millimeter, whatever it was. It wasn't very much. And if you, once you get it polished and it's nice and shiny like that, and you don't have too many lines in it. I can still see a little line in mine, but it's very, very light. But it, uh, it doesn't affect the trigger so far. <laughs> that trigger is killer. Anyway, that's kind of what I did. But yeah, putting it on, uh, taping your sandpaper down to a nice flat, hard surface, you know, a piece of steel or something, and then, uh, and then right on the edge, you know, and then running it back and forth, the whole piece, you know, you can hold it really smooth, and take several slices off until you get it really nice. You know, once you get all the machining marks out of it, like all those machining marks there, right here, So that's what I did. And that's how you get it good. So hey, let me drum a little, little bit and then we'll get and we'll put it back together. We can do here. Let's see what we can do. This guy here is fairly shiny already, right? Pretty sure you can see how shiny that is now, right? That's the sear, that little step there. Right here. Let's get it right there. So that's the most important thing to be mindful of. Just don't make that too small, because obviously if you if there was nothing, it would never cock, right? And uh and of course uh as you reduce it, it gets easier and easier. To slide that dude off and release it as this guy goes. Like this, right? Then when you pull the trigger, it slides off there. It's super slippery right now. So yeah, you want to fix that point. And I'll show you. I'll put it back together here somewhat. We can play with it some and see what we got. Anyway, just the two surfaces there. These two are the most important, but cleaning up the whole thing so the whole thing moves good, too, is important. And then I did a little of this, too, just a little bit, just kind of barely hit it. Anyway, everything moved pretty well before I even started, except this was terrible. This had about, instead of it being shiny, like it had about four big ridges in it, like these machining ridges here. <laughs> And I had those big ridges right in the middle. You pull the trigger, and it finally shoot. It was terrible. 
Anyway, I'll put it back together. We'll be back here. So like always, you know, it's important to have everything clean. So you can inspect this thing a little bit too. When you clean it up, make sure you don't have any funny burr or something in there. It, uh, I had nothing on mine, basically. I didn't have to do anything to this piece. Just make sure it's clean. That's about all I did with it. Okay, hey folks, how this piece goes back in here is basically just stick this guy up through here. And line that hole up right back here, this guy here. So once it's all in there, right, then you cock the gun. The bolt would come back past here, actually the hammer would come back past here to catch. And then when you pull the trigger, this goes up and the hammer flies forward and releases the air. There goes the pellet. Anyway, uh, you stick this dude in there first, such as that. Take your pin. And we saw that we pulled it out this way, so we want to stick it right back in the same direction. Like that. I got the little neural thing sticking out there, right? But this guy's in here nicely. Moves nice. Pins all lined up. I'll give it a couple minor taps here. Don't need much. A little bit. Actually, a little bit too loose. I might even put a drop of something on there. Maybe a little blue Loctite or something. Anyway, this thing's got to move like, like grease lightning. And it does. All right, very easy. Now, spring, of course, goes right in on the top of this guy right here. And that, of course, keeps those two pieces pushed apart. This guy here goes in like this. That little hole is for the spring. That dude goes in there just like that. Then when you get this hole lined up here, of course, you push in your little pin. Got right here. I want the neural side out like that. There it is, right? Released. Released. Cocked. Hit the, hit the trigger. Boom. Release. Very easy. Very easy, actually. Very easy. So, obviously, if you put this down on nice wood table or something you can tap that a lot easier than what I'm doing here I'm just trying to show you real quick and that starts right into that little block there we'll pick it up for a little bit one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven now you don't want to tighten it. Like it's kind of getting snug there, right? So if I just back it off that much, it's not tight. It doesn't have any special, you know, if you screw that in real tight, it might screw it up, right? So that's kind of getting tight there. But I got to come back about an eighth of a turn to put this in. Okay. Typically what I do is I put in these guys in the front here first. He's got it right here. You don't want to tighten them up too much yet. Just a little bit. Just to hold things in place. Like that where it's not loose. Then, you can take this guy here. One little step in this side of the rod. This guy's got a longer kind of a step. And the short piece to the front. So, on this guy here, it's important to make sure this rod is all the way down in. It's got a corresponding hole on the other side back here that this has got to go into. Well, you can put your spring on and actually have this thing sticking out a little bit, right? Because it's not in the hole. But now it's in the hole there. See, it's kind of past the edge here. If it's like that and you try to put it together, you can't do it. You got to get it in the hole up in the front up here. They swiggle a little bit like I did. And boom, there it is. Then, Slip in your spring. Slip in your spring. <laughs> Somehow. Oh, I had to shoot it. That's another point. I had it cocked, right? So 
So now it's all the way back like this. That's no good. So even if I push this forward, it's still cocked. You got to hit your trigger release to have this thing all go forward, right? So now it's all forward again. Okay, the rod's back in the front hole here. Then this little end cap piece goes on here or these bolts because if you get one cockeyed like that you can't put it in because it's hitting the edge there so they got to be all the way down so they're straight ah. <laughs> yeah, i heard it go in so yeah i gotta wiggle around a little bit it's a little tough because spring loaded obviously until you get those dudes both in there once you got them in there you start spinning in one but you can't spin it in all the way right because right now it's touching this bolt is touching the top of this but this one here is hitting that little lip if you just keep reefing on it you're going to destroy your gun so I'll screw them in a little bit like that and go to the other one screw it in like that go back and forth until you get them both all the way in and then you can tighten it up a little bit now same old song and dance you can tighten these guys but not too much just a little bit it's really good and tight that's about it right there that's it didn't get on it at all just barely got them tight and yeah, that's how you do it because it's an air gun <laughs> okay i won't give no more mac truck analogies there you go it's all tight it's like that okay now let's see here what we got now we got a functioning gun right we'll squeeze these two and I'll pull the safety back while I cock it. Oh, you see the safety kick in? Once it's cocked, the safety can be put on. That's how this needs to be adjusted. And they want a tiny bit of slop here, but not enough to make it shoot, right? The safety's on. No shooting. Pop the safety off. Almost nothing. Oh, really good. Yeah, terrific. Okay. Yeah, very nice. And of course, I'm not dry firing. I'm just releasing the bolt each time by testing it here. But uh, yeah, it's going to be around one pound. Let me uh, put the stock on here real quick and we'll test it. So if I cock it, see the trigger jump forward a little bit there? All right. Now I can put the safety on. All right. I usually squeeze both of them here to make the trigger go this way and pull this thing back this way. And then, of course, I know I'm in safety. Now, I got my finger over here. I don't want this thing to slam forward. But if I get on my trigger pretty hard, right? No shooting. Safety off. Now it should shoot like a dream, right? Yes, it does. So the safety's off. It's recocked. Got my little trigger gizmo here, right? basically in the middle of the trigger, like your finger would be. Turn this thing our way here a little bit. If you can read that, maybe. I don't know. Okay, anyway, I'll pull it gentle here. I got my finger on the bolt here to not let it slam forward. Whoa, look at that. Smidge over a half a pound. So, yeah, I don't want to polish it too much more. <laughs> so, let's try it again. Now, I'm not holding any pressure on the bolt because if you put pressure on here, it'll release easier. So, you want to get a little gap here with your thumb, right? So, try it again. Yeah, about three quarters of a pound. It'll probably end up being roughly about a pound again. I uh, I played with it many times, so um, I haven't repolished it like I just did a little bit, though. So, it might be even easier than before. <laughs> anyway, I hope that helps you. All right? It's uh, this gun is really getting good. It's absolutely amazing how accurate this dude is now. Uh, it's it's absolutely terrific. It's really good. Yeah, uh, even shooting at high speeds, uh, it seems to be just killer accurate. Yeah, getting good. It's taking a little bit of work, but holy smoke. You see all these in the stock here. I'm thinking about lightening this hog up here because it's so heavy. And that stock weighs about a little over three pounds, I think. And uh, so anyway, I was just thinking, just thinking, I can clean it all off if I want. But 
thinking. That's it. There's the trigger video. Peace, baby. Hope you like it. Hope you can get her done now. <laughs> Love you, baby. Have a wonderful day. Prospector trip out.